All right, I've got backup going. Sweet. Give me one second here. Sure. I took the waiting room feature off of my account or off the preference away. I don't know if that would be a good idea to put that back or not. I forgot I was on mute. Oh. Um, so I do have a couple things for the show tonight. If there's room, if not, it can get kicked to the nope, next. No. Definitely. Okay. Perfect. Um, it's along. Room? It's along the lines of my uh, ponderings on the quartz watch. Like directly parallel to it, and fell down a, a rabbit hole. I don't know how I haven't fallen down before, and it's not that deep. Um, okay. Yeah, I found it interesting. So I got like three minutes worth of videos. One of them's an audio clip. The other two, um, I'll send you all the links so you can pop them in the show notes. Yeah. And um, then I'll send them when I'm done because I've got them pulled up here and then I'll just send you directly the exact ones I play. Okay. And are you able to share screen now? I think you have that Let's permission. See. Let's see if I have the permissions. I think I switched all that too. Yeah, here we go. I can see YouTube. Yep, and that's what it will be. Cool. The CIA scientist. It's from oh, the last time it. we were on. Oh, is this the uh, Townsend? That... No, no, it's not going to be. It's going to be on computers, essentially. Computers and Boolean algebra. Bool bull ion. Boolean. 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 I'm probably saying it wrong. Boolean. 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 Right. I gotta say it quickly. Let's see. Let's go to Chat GTP, GPT and find out how to spell it. Okay, we are good to go. We've got a fresh cup of tea. Yeah, I, I've been having to, uh, since transitioning away from 13 questions, I need a, a small glass of water now because there's a lot more talking that I do on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, oh, we've got to have that. So is there anyone else that's coming? I don't think so. I think it's just us three and we are ready to rock and roll. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the working that is Chrononaut Chronicles. My name is Bill, and I will be your guide on this particular sonic adventure. The show is, of course, sponsored by mysticalwares.com, which is Derek Condit's online metaphysical supply shop. He is not here today with us. I think he's doing another podcast, actually. But uh, I am joined by special guest Chrononaut today, uh, Pod Cave. Todd, thank you for, for being here. 
Thank, thank you, Bill. Thanks for having me. And I'm happy to be with you again after, I think it's at least 18 months since our last chat. Oh, I, I don't know. Have you been on this show once before? Well, not, yeah, I think <laughs> on your other show, the 13 Questions podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's been a while. That is, yeah. It's been, yes, well, well over. Maybe even two years. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of 13 Questions, though, that is uh, the other person I'm joined by is my, my former co-host on that show, Adam Loyal. Adam, thank you for showing up this afternoon. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. So for uh, today's show, is a little bit of a special show. It is the first show uh, I am, but we are recording after turning one. We did uh, an episode, I did an episode with Ken Rolla uh, closer to the actual anniversary date, but this will be uh, the, the official, you know, after one year old show. And uh, because this is a working, it is a work in progress. Things grow, things progress, they change, they mutate. And uh, that applies to this working as well. Uh, so we do have new show segments to do. Uh, there are still four of them, and uh, the, the ideas and the goals behind them are still the same. However, we're going to reframe them and approach them uh, slightly differently. So uh, I will explain these as we get into them, as opposed to summarizing everything up front, just because I think that'll be uh, easier to follow along. Uh, but I will say right off the bat that the, the four segments are now awareness, armor, augmentation, and anchor. And we will get into what all of those are as we move on through the show. So for those of you that have been uh, following along since the inception of Chrononaut Chronicles, you will remember that we covered quite extensively the work of Don Miguel Ruiz and the Four Agreements book. And... Uh, this is what this show is is heavily influenced by, is the structure of this ancient Toltec wisdom tradition. And according to Don, uh, Toltec is not a, a, a race, right? It's a way of living. It's a way of life, right? So anybody can be a Toltec. It's not tied to, to your genetics so much. And the way that you do this is, is by practicing the, the four... Uh, the four agreements, which I have behind me. Uh, so just to recap real quickly, be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. So those are the four agreements. There are also three masteries that Don talks about. The first of them being awareness. The other two are intention and transformation. But first we come to awareness, which is the first segment of our show. And I came up with a good quote from Mr. Rogers. Everybody remembers Fred Rogers and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, right? Like we're all familiar oh, with the show. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. So no no introduction on, on Mr. Rogers and his background, but uh, he has very many, uh, many, many sage wisdom sayings. And one of them being, quote, as human beings, it is our job in life to help people realize how rare and valuable each one of us really is. That each of us has something that no one else has or ever will have. Something inside that is unique to all time. It is our job to encourage each other to discover that uniqueness and to, prov and to provide ways of developing its expression. So, from here on out, <laughs> In, in lieu of giving, sharing a gratitude, and I, I do realize I'm springing this, guys, on you at the spur of the moment here, I would like to make the participatory, kind of yeah, the more or less participatory, sharing, touchy-feely subject or a portion of the show, the awareness section, with this uh, awareness exercise, which I found on, on uh, Dean Graziosi's website. And Dean works a lot with uh, Tony Robbins. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Tony Robbins, motivational speaker. And uh, this is this this particular exercise is to compliment yourself. So I would need both of you to to uh, take a few seconds here and, and just think about something that uh, something that you can compliment yourself about. And I'll go first to give you guys some 
time to think about that if you need to, because it actually kind of uh, took me a while to to come up with mine. And this is this is interesting, and this is also kind of illustrates the point behind the exercise is we spend a lot of of uh, mind space and energy in inside of our heads, right? And uh, Don Miguel talks about this in in relation to uh, the the mind parasite, which is the judge, the victim, and and um, oh, judge victim and uh what is it it'll come to me in a moment but uh we we often we all are our our own worst critics so the point behind this exercise is to uh, highlight our our uniqueness and that uh bring bringing awareness of who we are we are marvelous individuals were marvelous beings when we can express that in in, in certain ways and uh, just getting our minds to think about the positive aspects of ourselves as opposed to being critical all the time which maybe it's just me I don't know but <laughs> um, more more effort given towards uh, focusing on the good what already is I believe is is more uh, in line with awareness compared to what we were doing with the almanac segment. So, um, my my compliment to myself, I was thinking about a lot of things, and I was thinking about you know the podcast and, and doing the show and and thirteen questions and and my philosophy background, and I thought to myself, well, maybe you know I'm good, I'm pretty good at studying, right? Like I can synthesize and write papers, synthesize information, write papers and present stuff relatively well, right? So so that's my compliment is uh I'm good at studying, right? And I was thinking like, well that's gotta be there's gotta be a better way to say that, right? So I just Googled like what is a person who is good at studying called? And I learned a new word called philomath. Which is different from a polymath. We've all heard of polymaths, right? Is people that are capable of doing like anything and everything. Well, a philomath is not synonymous synonymous with a uh, polymath. As a polymath is someone who possesses great and detailed knowledge and facts from a variety of disciplines, while a philomath is someone who greatly enjoys learning and study. And that's from Quora.com. So, my my self compliment to to me <laughs> is uh, is being a philomath, I guess. So, um, I don't really want to pick on, pick on pick on someone to go next. So, if, if any of you two want to jump in to uh, to compliment yourself, I know this is maybe a little out of the norm, but uh, if you need more time, I I can. No, I can uh, I can jump in there. Cool. Uh, and it it springs from what I'd planned for my gratitude, but they really are parallel. Um, I'm really good at customer service, and I love doing it. And dealing with people directly in person in impactful ways is, I don't know, uh, when you get into the nitty gritty of like retail, uh, it takes a special type type of person to do it. And I don't know, uh, finding myself in that class of person, uh, it's finally nice to be back somewhere where uh, I'm surrounded by people of equal skill. So yeah, I, I love customer service and being good at it. Yeah, being able to be that one guy that people go to to have their issues, you know, addressed and concerned, like a, that uh, helps with, you know, developing leadership and responsibility and and all these good qualities. So, hell yeah, dude. Todd, did you have something? Yes. So I um, a compliment I would say for myself is that I am able to ingest large volumes of information and I'm able to uh, even though it's very you know it's very complicated it's very dense and um, it's very difficult to wrap your head around I have an ability to be able to explain it to people that is easily understood and it makes sense because a lot of people tell me well you know I've never heard it explained in the way you did and you join the dots together in such a way that is coherent and makes sense. So that's one of the things that I 
I would like to compliment myself on that I can do where, and I have a good memory in terms of being able to um, pull up a lot of um, long memories, like if not like my short term memory may not be the best, my long term memory is really good. So times, dates, places, and events and stuff, I'm able to recall um, reasonably well. Um, so that's basically, I would say the compliment for myself. Hell yeah, man. I, I really enjoy the videos that you do on Instagram when you just, where you're walking somewhere. I don't know if you're on your way to the gym or whatever, to walking, walking and talking like those, those are, those are, yeah. really, you know, it's, it's a good source of inspiration I've found. So yeah, dude, thank you Thanks, man. for putting those out there. And, uh, before we get started for too much, uh, do you want to maybe tell people how they can get a hold of you, uh, like throw out your social handles and all that? Yeah, sure. So I, uh, I'm on Instagram. You can find me at Adriano underscore two four six, or you can find me uh, on Facebook, um, Todd Cave, my name. And yeah, I am an online fitness trainer, and I also delve into ancient hidden history, spirituality, consciousness, and uh, human evolution. All these kind of um, topics that um, don't win you many friends and. Uh, can have you on the verge of being cancelled so yeah if you like all of those kind of things and you into um getting into shape as well just hit me up send me a dm and let's see if i can help definitely uh definitely hit todd up if you are looking to to get in shape i've gone through a six month program with todd and i learned so much uh, not just on exercises, but on healthy diet too. Like that, the extra you can one could almost say that doing the exercise is the easy part because it takes the less amount of time, whereas eating and preparing the food is is more time consuming and often more challenging because you have to. For some people, they might have to change drastically. You know how you know their habits, eating habits, and whatnot. So, yeah, definitely a great resource Todd is to for all that stuff. What are you gonna? Have anything to add, Todd? About the yeah, I agree with you. the The nutrition part is the part that tends to give the most challenge for most people, and this is because we've been, excuse me, for the lack of a better word, we've kind of been indoctrinated into how we eat, and um, you find that since the advent of television, most humans have subsequently become fatter and healthier more depressed and I would say it, it, it the vast one of the main reasons is because of TV social media now in the you know in the millennial um, era but then you have um, all these music videos and movies and stuff so they're very very uh, clever and how they do product placement so I think I was reading somewhere that for example just to give context, the Coca-Cola logo would have been seen more than 100,000 times by the age, uh, I think by the age of 18, um, from movies, billboards, um, music videos, social media, whatever, whatever way you, you, you consume information, you, you have uh, contact with the Matrix, you would have had 100,000 times of being exposed to that logo, which is... To prove my point, to say that we've been heavily, heavily indoctrinated, manipulated, programmed, and um, brainwashed, really, into the way that we eat, the way we think, and the way we do things. So this is the reason why I say that, you know, we, we've subsequently become probably in our known history, the unhealthiest, you know? Absolutely. And... Coca-Cola especially is just a really good example of the propaganda machine that American companies, uh, corporate entities, you know, the powers that be uh, become has, you know, became is becoming is right because they, they their aim of Coke was to be able to reach uh, they started, you know, during World War Two era ish, probably a little bit before. But I remember that their their marketing scheme was to be able to uh, for a GI, uh, a person you know, in, in the armed forces, even if they were overseas, they, they could go anywhere and still get a Coke. And it was going to be, you know, cheaper than water, essentially. So th that's just a testament to, you know, the the propaganda that uh, 
that that we are you know deep that level is what we're dealing with so and they succeeded too like it's, it's insane. absolutely it's insane how many people drink just soda like it's water like they don't drink any water that blows my mind it's cheaper for coca-cola to Fox. fill a bottle with coke than with pure water that's a mind fuck yeah, maybe the water is probably you know you put it in a plastic bottle, it's not pure anymore. Aquafina, yeah. isn't that what their their water brand is? Oh yeah, and it, it costs yeah. them more to produce uh, Dasani water, even though that's the water used for their Coke, because they've got the entire process for all the ingredients down to such a efficient system that yeah, it's it's amazing to think that you know reverse osmosis costs more than the rest of the ingredients. Speaking of of reverse osmosis and, and cleansing, like uh, impurities from water supply, the the other uh, formula to that Don Miguel Ruiz mind parasite virus that everybody is fighting, and that awareness is the first step in, in conquering is is our belief system, right? We have the judge, the victim, and the belief system all alive in our head and trying to you know domesticate us essentially. So. That was the missing part for that I was talking about earlier. Um, and that was meant to emphasize awareness, right? Of, of being aware of, of who we are here. I have the book here. I'll just read real quickly. Uh, awareness is always the first step because if you are not aware, there is nothing you can change. So being aware that we have the ability to change these things that maybe seem unchangeable, right? And uh, having the awareness that we're marvelous and that we are capable, like we are beings of light, literally beings of light. We we this is one of the first topics that we covered in the show in the episode called Meatloaf and Beings of Light, or maybe it's Beings of Light and Meatloaf. But yeah, episode two, I think, go check it out. Um, talk about a study that uh, Lynn, oh no, that Dr. Fitz Albert Pop did. Uh, Lynn McTaggart is the author of the book. She does a really good job documenting all these scientific studies. Of, of the just wonderful reality that we live in so that uh i think that does it for the awareness segment um i, I do need to work on like a like a bumper music drops find something to kind of smooth this out but um the next segment in the show segment two was called the gratitude segment we are now going to uh we are now going to refer to it as the armor segment um and the idea behind this is still working with our our heart our heart brain right our heart and our brain connecting these two and we we kind of form a uh, what i like to do is imagine a buckyball i don't know if you can i can't see my own video but here we go yeah it's like a soccer ball shaped this is a trick that i learned from derek uh when you're armoring yourself if you think of yourself inside of this type of uh hexagon sphere thing um, that will better enable your uh, metaphysical body to uh, just deal with with the environment that it's in and uh, I did have a Greg Braden clip to play that uh, he explains his own kind of method for oh here it is going through and connecting his own like the method that he uses let me cue this up real quick just got to put it in the folder and so instead in this segment instead of sharing gratitudes like we have been the sharing the sharing part will be in the awareness section and then i will figure out something to fill uh, this short little gratitude segment uh, in from week to week it will probably change um, it will definitely change. We're going to get into some Mr. Rogers stuff, probably more Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Um, but for now, I thought maybe we could listen to Greg talk about a a method to to help facilitate the the heart and the brain. So let me share this through Zoom. This will be the first time doing this for a recording, so it'll be hopefully better audio quality. Here we go. It's about five minutes. Um, it's a TikTok video. 
So if you're watching on YouTube, you can actually see Greg talking. So here we go. Because we're optimizing the conversation between the heart and the brain, between your heart and your brain. So how do we do this? Three steps. The first step is to simply shift your awareness from your mind into your heart. And what I've found is in the Western traditions for many people, that's easier said than done. I'll ask people, are you in your heart? And they'll say, yep, I'm in my heart. But what they are really doing is they're still in their brain thinking about what it would be like if they're in their heart. This is where the indigenous traditions come in. Our ancestors told us, and when I spend time with my indigenous friends, I say, how do you guys do this? And they say, it helps if you can gently touch your heart center physically in a way that's comfortable for you. In the Mayan traditions, you see a, an open palm right on the heart. In many of the Middle Eastern traditions, you see the same thing. Uh, in the Buddhist traditions, you see a prayer mudra that physically touches the sternum. The key is, any of those things creates a gentle touch, a physical sensation right over the heart center, and your awareness will always go to the place where you feel the sensation. That's the key. So if you can create a touch over your heart, your awareness will go there, first step. Second step, very simple. Slow your breathing a little bit slower than typical, maybe five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale. And here's why that's powerful. Because the only time you would ever slow your breathing and breathe in that way is when you feel safe. When you feel that you're in a place that's safe and you're not threatened and you're not vigilant of your surroundings. So you're telling your body you're in a place that's safe. Slow your breathing. Third step, and this is the key, is to begin to feel the feeling that creates 0.1 hertz. Feel the feeling that sets up the coherence between your heart and your brain. How do we do that? I gave it away earlier. I've already mentioned it. Scientists have found at the Institute of Heart Math, their researchers have found that there are four key words that work almost 100% of the time for everyone. Appreciation for anything or anyone. Gratitude for anything or anyone. Care and compassion. If you can feel one or some combination of those feelings in your heart while you're breathing as if your breath is coming from your heart, touching your heart center, now you're setting up this communication between the heart and the brain. Now you are triggering those neurons to begin to reach out and find other neurons to strengthen this connection. And that's why I mentioned before, it takes about 72 hours, three days to build these networks. So that means the more you do what we're about to do right now, the stronger this connection becomes in your life. Let's try this. Let's go through this together. And this is the way we're going to close out our segment today. I'm going to invite you first to shift your awareness from your mind into your heart by gently touching your heart center. Okay? And once you're there, breathe a little slower than you typically would. Maybe five seconds inhale. Five seconds exhale. And as you breathe, feel your breath coming from your heart and begin to feel those feelings. Compassion, gratitude, care. Appreciation. To the best of your ability. To the best of your ability. And I'm going to do the same. Okay. And what researchers have found is that typically three minutes, only three minutes of doing what we have just done will set into motion a cascade of events within your body, biochemical events that will last as long as six hours. The immune response, the SIGA response, first line immune in the white blood cells of your mouth, they are reflecting this effect for up to six hours after you actually create the experience. So I mentioned that we can do this any time of day. You can do it before you sleep at night, first thing when you wake up in the morning, this technique, as simple as it seems, is the powerful key to awaken the greatest potential in your life. A simple technique that we have just experienced, it is the key 
to our personal power and to the doorway of all the abilities considered rare and mystical in the past. We don't have to go to a monastery halfway around the world to learn them. Sorry about the uh, bleep there at the end that TikTok puts on. I don't know if that uh, rattled your eardrums like it did mine, but I will definitely edit that out afterwards. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's Greg Braden. Uh, I've been a fan of Greg's for a number of years now. Um, Derek is actually the one that introduced me or suggested I watch some of his videos. And uh, he did write a, a book forget the name of it but uh, oh the divine matrix i believe it is called uh, i bought that and read it. it is very good i would recommend that to to anybody and uh you you uh, will recall that greg mentions the uh, heart math institute which is a website that i was kind of looking at while i was restructuring the 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 segments here and uh this this segment we're in right now is called armor and and just a little bit of synchronicity here uh dr j andrew armor is the one who introduced the term heart brain in 90, 1991 so this this the show segment is meant to 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 you know kind of reflect like putting on the armor of god right like that type of armor and then then we have dr armor which is spelled a r m o u r it's so, a nice archetypal uh, fractal tie. Right? Yeah, so there's just too perfect not to mention. <laughs> um, but what he, what Dr. Armour showed was that the heart's uh, complex nervous system qualified it as a little brain. So there's about 40,000, from what I read, right, 40,000 neurons in the heart compared to, I think there's, there's so many more in the brain, there's like 100 billion some neurons in the brain. But interestingly enough, the heart sends more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. So thinking with the heart kind of turns, uh, takes on a new meaning with, with, you know, given, given this information. So that was just a little side note. I wanted to add on to, to Greg's uh, explanation of, of method there. And uh, we'll be hearing probably a little bit more from Greg, uh, definitely more from this heart math place. Um, I'm going to try to mix in some Mr. Rogers in here somehow. Uh, I'm really loving that uh, Mr. Rogers, Bob Ross energy lately. I've been watching a lot of Bob Ross painting videos on uh, on Pluto TV. Just a little self-reflection. Relaxing. You know, the cats and the dog like it. It's, <laughs> he's actually the, the grandfather of that whole uh, AMSR movement before he even knew, you know, nobody knew what that was at the time, but you could say unknowingly he's the one that kind of kicked that off with the paintbrush strokes and all that stuff. And so, yeah, that, uh, that pretty much wraps up the, the armor section segment. So we've got awareness armor. Step three would be augmentation. And, uh, I, I actually had to look up this word in much the same way. I, I looked up the, uh, philo math word, uh, but uh, to augment is to enlarge something or to add to it. So what are we augmenting here in this segment? Well, the, the point behind the segment is still expansion. It's still knowledge, right? So we're augmenting our knowledge. And if we all remember uh, G.I. Joe, uh, knowing is half the battle. Knowledge is power. So you could say that we're augmenting our power here in this segment um, but uh, what we do is we we try to explore uh, whatever topics pique our interest from since the last time we we, we met sometimes this is just simply headlines or uh, we've done reviews uh, profiles and wizardry we had a four-part mini-series in that and um, this week though we have uh, Todd Cave here to talk a little bit about, I think we, we mentioned aliens in general. Um, Adam, I know, has something to bring to the table. I've got a few clips. So this is really just uh, an open forum, uh, roundtable type uh, part of the, of the show. Um, 
Adam, did you want to go first with your uh, time themed piece? Sure, I can certainly uh, lots of puns. jump in with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It actually works perfect for uh, the augmenting as well. Of course, so. it the segues on this show are all, they would be seamless, right? If I if I didn't stumble over my words so much, but working on that. <laughs> So I've previously talked on the show about how I'm absolutely fascinated by like crystals. You know, you think of them as just this, uh, you know, uh, woo woo hippie thing. Uh, but I'm wearing a, you know, a quartz watch, which has a crystal in it that's vibrating at a frequency that can be measured and it's telling time. So it's like, what other properties do things have? You apply a little bit of electricity and now it's got this whole new thing, you know, we're energetic beings. But I've never even connected that, you know, attached to that piece of quartz is also a piece of silicon. And when we build computer chips, we grow silicon. So we're just making a crystal. And then we go ahead and we use um, optical lithography so that we can take light and using layers of min minerals and metals, build up and build transistors. And it's just like started blowing my mind because I'm starting to think like, you know, these are very like fundamental um, organizations of matter around us um, that you would not think, you know, like, you know, the computational, you know, qualities of silicon. Um, and that sent me down the rabbit hole of looking at, you know, like, well, how does a computer actually work? Because I'm like, well, I know it does math, but like, how does it do math? And how does that like turn into what we're doing right now? Um and it starts off with the transistor, which is essentially just a switch. You know, it was a technology where you can make them smaller and smaller, where you apply a little current and it'll, you know, it'll prevent or allow the electricity to flow across. And that is where this Boolean algebra comes into play. And I'm absolutely fascinated by this because you have essentially um, math that's built on logic using only ones or zeros on or off. And I find that just endlessly fascinating when you think of the universe itself. You know, everything is, you know, light or dark, true, false. You know, there's always this dichotomy of one or the other. It is a, a fundamental of the universe. And when you take that fundamental of only, you know, two positions on, off, light, dark, um, you can organize switches in such a way that they interact where they can start to compute. And it's, it's like the base language, the primary, uh, you know, machine language is this very, it's based on just that two positions. And I find it just fascinating that we as human beings are recreating what fundamentally the universe is built on. And when you just start thinking about a, a holographic universe, it's just, it's endlessly fascinating to me that, you know, uh, I don't know, a computer is literally just metal and crystals organized using light. So it's kind of like, you know, in the beginning, there was light, you know, they work by sending electricity, all the simple fundamental things around us that are going on are just represented in a computer chip. So that was essentially my, uh, uh, my mind rant there, Mr. Bill. Yeah, it it's super interesting just observing the binary nature of you know the universe, you know, something on or off, ones or zeros. We even see this in in you know the uh the on off button or switches for computers. It's got this the circle with the line in the middle with the one and a mm -hmm. zero, the one on or off, right? So yeah, it's it's all over the place. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing to me because I never wrapped my brain around the fact that, you know, just using simple switches, you know, you can create different gates, you know, and very simply, you know, uh, they're doing things like if both buttons are pressed, the light will go on. If one button is pressed, it won't. And you start doing just simple things like that with using the routing of electricity and it turns into, you know, my God, what are we doing right now? Um. 
you know, there's billions of these things compressed inside the device that you're using at the moment. So pretty cool. Big, uh, big old shout out to, uh, to Silicon. Got to love that sand underneath our feet. Silicon Valley. Yep. Okay. So the building on what you said, the basically it more or less just proves consciousness and the our connection with the one and this is why we've had many ascended masters as that have come here and they've all basically said that the kingdom within is no the kingdom is found within and this is why christ specifically said my kingdom is not of this world and because we're governed by our five senses in this third density this third dimension which is purely physical we're not able to uh, see beyond the spectrum of light that we're able to see because human beings are only able to see 0.00004%, sorry, 5% of all light, which means that we're talking about uh, a pin, the size of a pin, no, you're talking about uh, the size of a pinhead in the whole universe basically is our ability to see. And this is why our perception of reality is very skewed because the controllers of this world um because we do have controllers uh, we do have overlords and they own this planet lock stock and barrel they have decided to create like a false matrix of perception and this is why we are in the, the position that we're in now where we we are living in a great stage of tyranny on the entire planet there's not one country on earth now that is not clear that we're living under a state of tyranny. And the reason for that is because we are actually superior beings to them. And we know this because um, when you go back to the most ancient records on earth, which are the Sumerian tablets, one of the creator gods, Enki, he actually um, told Adapa, because there's a tablet called The Legend of Adapa, and he actually told Adapa that he created us with the potential to be greater than us. This is where the um, the fallen angels were supposed to worship the sons of man story comes from. So basically, because we have been systematically dumbed down, indoctrinated, brainwashed, terrorized, instilled with loads of fears and traumas, we are stuck in this false matrix of perception and re of reality and perception which we think that what we see on the screen is real. This is why now they're trying to up the ante and push augmented reality and virtual reality because the long-term goal is to get us to be in pods and or um, there was a, a movie called, from memory called Surrogates where you had like a, a, a beat, a, you can call it an avatar body that you would sit down in your in the comfort of your home and you would control it with your mind. And basically your avatar will go there and he would do your physical work for you. If you were like a policeman, he could jump higher, run faster. He wouldn't need to eat. He wouldn't need to take breaks to go to the loo and stuff like that. And basically it, because the world was quotation marks more dangerous, you would send your avatar out there uh, to do this work. And all of these are precursors to what is to come because what they've done is that they've created a genre called sci-fi and they put the truth in sci-fi. And by putting a label sci-fi, what that does is that that penetrates past the part of the brain that would actually have any analytical thinking and critical thinking to ask themselves, well, is this thing real or possible? But because it's sci-fi, we just sit down there with, a beer, a glass of wine, some popcorn, whatever tickles your fancy, uh, and watch it for entertainment. When in reality, they're actually teaching you and telling you what they're doing to you because they are trying to bypass the karmic law. So in reality, we are actually choosing our enslavement by ignoring the truth. So this is why I always say to tell us the truth in the movies and the lies in school. And this is why... Um, today especially 
uh, kids come out of school and university and they have zero life skills. They have no idea of what a credit card or a debit card is. They don't understand how loans work. They don't know how to write a business plan. They don't even know how to attend an interview. They don't know how to create, how to write a CV. You know what I mean? All these kind of skills for life. They don't know how to cook. They don't know how to hunt. They know how to shoot guns. You know what I mean? Self-defense. You know, they don't even do any sort of physical training so that you can create like a decent mindset to be able to overcome challenges and, and, and fears and traumas. So all of it is done to keep us dumb down, demoralized, and then they're trying to normalize what is happening in the world now where we have a lot of strange behavior where people inject uh, foreign substances into their bodies thinking it's medicine to help them when it's actually only making them sicker and worse and in some cases uh, killing them. Then you have people uh, with a mind virus that they're telling themselves they need to cut off certain body parts so that they can feel like they're this sex or the other, right? So all, all of these are basically coming from the point that we are being heavily propagandized, enslaved, and we are like, a bird in a cage where we don't even know what freedom is. We have luxuries. Some people may have loads and loads of money. They may have Rolls Royces, flying on private jets, et cetera, et cetera. But they, they, they don't really actually have true freedom because they're still slaves to, to the money that they have. And I'm not saying that money is a bad thing, but what it is is that when you become super wealthy, you are a slave to that lifestyle where you will do whatever it takes in order to maintain that lifestyle. So what it is now is that most cases, not all cases, those people sell their souls and they do strange rituals and practices and do things to children, etc., in order to keep what they have, right? So they actually still are a slave to the money because it is the love of money that is the root of all evil, not money itself. This is the the, the trick where the super religious people um, don't really see. They just bypass the main word, the love. It is, the, well, two words, the love. The love of money is what causes man to kill his literal brother, murder his father, you know what I mean? Just for the sake of money. So we're all being uh, heavily... Uh, controlled and manipulated because the 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 end goal is they want us they want to well they want to in, enslave us to a point where people have no idea so have any of you guys ever heard of 6g technology is that i mean it's just the next step after 5g right correct so 6g is going to be levels so 6g they want to have something something ridiculous like over a trillion um, devices connected. So your glasses will have chips, your clothes will have chips, um, your 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 mobile phone and, and, and smartwatch already have chips in it. But we're talking about chips in your fridge, chips in your TV, chips in your toaster, chips in your kettle. We're talking about chips in you, right? So basically, they will be able to read your thoughts, feelings, they would know, and this is where we're going into like minority report levels, where you will have a system of pre-crime, where the AI will actually use predictive modeling to determine, okay, that guy, Bill, he stole a chocolate bar 20 years ago. He has a X percentage of stealing another chocolate bar. So we know that if he passes on these types of streets that have chocolate stores, excuse me, there's a, a percentage risk where he would steal. <laughs> so before you even think about doing it they're going to do predictive modeling and come and arrest you for a pre-crime this is the kind of level that they want to get to because they fear us so because they fear us what they're doing is that they're creating a system that is going to have no wriggle room no leeway and we will be perpetual slaves forever because once you start to put the chips into your body then they will start then they will cause you to upload your consciousness to the cloud you merge with the machine and you become the Borg. So it's up to us now to actually take a stand and um, push back and say no. And this is why we need strong men because it's 
our responsibility as men to push back against the system and say, no, we are the ones that have gone to war in the past. We are the ones that fought for these kingdoms. We are the ones that put these warlords into power. Well, we can do the same thing and take back our power from them because the system is rigged and it's a big old club and you ain't in it. Yeah, this I mean, this speaks to the domestication process that Don Miguel talks about that, you know, as soon as we're born into this world, we 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 enter into what he calls the awareness of the first dream. And which is just real quickly reading from I got a book here, so I'll just read from it. So it says, uh, we have learned that the dream you are living in now is the result of the outside dream hooking your attention and feeding you all of your beliefs. So a reference to that belief system that we all have a belief system, right? And we all have a judge and that victim voice in our head, right? So the process of domestication can be called the dream of the first attention because it was how your attention was used for the first time to create the first dream of your life. So in regards to, to domestication, uh, to finish that, that, that process there, uh, what he then talks about is the dream of the first, the second attention, which is when we recalibrate our, ourselves using the four agreements, right. And, and enacting those to, uh, with intent to transform, literally transform our lives. Right. So, uh, yeah, dude, there's definitely a party line when it comes to the domestication or the controllers and just a case in point, uh, just a few, if, you know, earlier today, I was listening to a Shanghai reality podcast, which is one other one of Derek's shows. And they're talking about, uh, he had a guest on, and the guest had a background in pharmacology. And he was talking about the benefits of Shungite. I didn't listen to the whole, I didn't get to listen to the whole thing yet. But uh, if, if you just go to Wikipedia and you type in Shungite, you will see that it pretty much says that it's quackery. It's, uh, it doesn't have any scientific backing. Uh, there, there's no, there's no, there's no there there, essentially, is what you'll get from Wikipedia or the party line, right? But if you go to the sources and you look at the sources that Wikipedia is basing their, you know, arguments or the position on, it's it's things like Gizmodo and a bunch of opinion pieces from, you know, the, the mainstream publications. It's it's not, there's not, no scientific papers because Derek has a huge collection of all these scientific studies which absolutely prove the efficiency and effic efficacy of, of Shungite. You can just just hold a hold a piece in your hand for a day like you'll feel a difference it's not it's not quackery but uh because it's not in line with what they want us to you know want us to believe it's not it's not going to be promoted but luckily we do have freedom of speech still and derek is uh you know made it his mission more or less along with nancy hopkins the the, the other the host of that show to to get shungite to the masses and and you know he of course sponsors this show and and hopefully uh, several others too. But uh, I do have another one which I will be participating in, not hosting another podcast in the works, uh, which he will be sponsoring as well. So um, maybe more on that later. Uh, but to your point on uh, science fiction, though, and you you mentioned the Borg, and I know Adam is a Star Trek fan. Have any of you seen Earth Final Conflict? It's a Gene Roddenberry series. He did um, the, he he wrote the pilot episode, right? And then he died. Uh, so somebody else with the Roddenberry name picked up the show and actually you know produced it. But uh, it aired in '97 for four seasons, and it's it's about the uh, the aliens returning to Earth and that they have been here before. And the series starts out with them. Like they they showed up three years ago, so you're three years into the return of uh, what you could call Anunnakis or Elohim, maybe, or um, whatever label you want to give these these entities, because they're talked about in you know all the cultures, all the sky people or whatever, right? So uh, have you guys seen that show? Because there's so much. Speaking of like soft disclosure and science fiction you know quote-unquote science fiction i think no that... and that's that's no, absolutely all over the place it reminds me a bit of the tv show first wave i never saw this um but one thing i find very interesting is if you listen to um 
oh my gosh, now I can't think of his name. He does the show with Ross Colhart. He's a very famous movie producer. He did uh, the television series Dark Skies. Um, but he talks about how at the premiere of one of the Dark Skies episodes, um, when or like when they were doing like the wrap up and everything with the crew, that the final edit had not been put through, that the only people that had seen it were editors, people in the room. It was it was, you know, being held like very secret, kind of, you know, in the classic Hollywood way. And that two people from the Navy came in to speak to him. Uh, high ranking individuals said, hey, we wanted to talk to you. Uh, we just want to let you know that, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff that you got in here was a lot more right than you would imagine. And we'd like to show you some things. And they tried to set up a meeting with him in a cemetery at like one in the morning or something, you know, like the following day. And he declined. He's like, I got a family and stuff. But it just shows that whether or not they're even trying to portray the truth, that um, there is a deep injection uh, through both help and probably obfuscation mixed in with truth uh, directly to films in Hollywood. Uh, you know, they're... Um, uh, the X-Files filmed at some locations which are undisclosed for uh, crash retrievals, um, you know, secret military things. So there's been all these cool little things that go along. And, yeah, science fiction really is, like you said, it's that um, it's manipulating our timeline. Yeah, especially when, you know, the big dogs come in to be like executive producers or help with the show. Like I remember there's this one film uh, came out in 1991 called Plymouth, and it's about this town that has to go to the moon to colonize the moon. And Lockheed Martin was in the background, like saying how the moon habitats would look and the ships and the technology and, and all this stuff. And it there's so, there was so much money spent on this movie, but like hardly anybody ever knows about it. Like it's insane. Um, you also, Todd, you mentioned Enki. Um, I have been following recently Dr. Michael Sala's exopolitics podcast. And there are uh, multiple you know guests on there that talk about their, experiences with with you know um, secret space programs or meeting extraterrestrials and all that and I've, i think i've heard that one of them said that anki was going to come back or something like that or that or wake up or what so i'm curious like what are you what is your working theory currently on like what uh like what what's in store for us based off of what you can what, what have you you know put together up until in your life until this point i guess well what is in store for us is it's is so deep that um I'll try to see if I can do a holistic picture. So what is about to come in the very near future is that we will realize we will learn and understand that governments are only there to enslave us. We will learn that the religions are only there to trap us spiritually. We will learn that the economic system was only created to enslave us financially. We will learn that even the education system was only created to make us dumber. The, the, the health um, organizations were actually set up to kill us. They're the death corporations. And what's going to happen is that all of these things are going to start to be revealed where more and more people are going to start to become visible or conscious of it, right? Because the thing is that once you see it, you can't unsee it. And the problem is that the vast majority of people don't see it. So what happens is that people are living in a bubble. But when that bubble bursts, a lot of people are not going to know how to handle it because these are people that have been, for lack of a better word, sheep all their lives and just sleeping. So then when you add the, the complexity that extraterrestrials are actually the creators of us, they're not the creators of the universe, but the creators of us in this current form, that is going to be very, very difficult, especially for the religious people, because according to religion, aliens aren't real. Uh, we know that it is we have been visited here um, a lot in the past because there's something called the Nuremberg incident 
which happened um, about 500 years ago, where it was visible that there were alien spacecrafts in disguise and they actually were fighting a war. And this was documented in a painting as well. And when then we started to realize that the religions are even sicker than we thought that these are the ones that promote, support, and push for child sex trafficking, do sex magic, sacrifice children, inject adrenochrome, all these kind of stuff. Uh, people are going to realize, then they're going to realize all of the rituals and pagan stuff that they're doing. It's going to be extremely hard for those people that have not been uh, building a spiritual house because a lot of people today, they, they, they are just, they have no belief in anything, right? They don't even, because they believe in nothing, they don't even believe in themselves. So they're walking through life actually thinking that they're this insignificant thing and just following the latest trends because they want to fit in. And when that whole paradigm uh, hologram is shattered, it's going to cause, like Christ said, it's going, to, it's going to cause man's hearts to fail them. Some people are going to react violently and they're going to go and commit loads of murders, rape. They're going to freaking commit suicide. People are going to lose their minds. And basically when they have shows like the zombie apocalypse, we're going to have a zombie apocalypse on earth where people may not even be breaking in your house to, to kill you. They'd be breaking in your house to steal your food, right? Because simultaneously they're uh, creating food shortages famines, droughts, they're playing um, God by manipulating the weather, creating storms, earthquakes, like they have this technology, you know, and what's going to come is when you get to realize that you've been living at such a low level for your entire life, and you've reincarnated probably close to a few thousand times, and, 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 and you're still like struggling here, it's going to be extremely hard for people to face themselves in the mirror. And that is what's to come. And it's going to be extremely hard because most people would not have done the work on themselves. So what's going to happen is that when it is time to use the work that you've done in yourself to get you through in terms of your faith, your belief, your confidence in yourself, your knowledge and knowing that you are God, just an individualized version because you're a fractal of God, which contains the whole, when the time is now to be preparing for up for that day, when the trumpet is called, when you judge yourself. Because Christ said, I didn't come to reserve judgment. I've res uh, no, I didn't come to judge. I've reserved judgment for the son. And we're all sons of God. We're sons of man. So when you come to realize that you are this powerful being and you have been basically living at a mediocre level it's going to be too hard for people to to, to 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 accept so a lot of people will just run away from the truth and go and hide themselves um hide their heads in the sand and and just feel sorry for themselves you know yeah i, I agree that there is uh just around the corner what Cliff High would like to say is a, a a level of hyper novelty that we have not yet seen in all of recorded written recorded accepted history, right? And by hyper novelty, we mean things that are super super new, so new that they don't fit into our paradigms, our current paradigms that that uh, we have been that have been forced upon us, right? We've been domesticated by, and so along with this comes comes. The death of a lot of things, like you're saying, the death of authority is one of the things that uh, people are going to have a hard time dealing with when they, when we learn that these control systems, like you know, the mainstream media, religion, money, like all these things are going to change. They're going to either you know die completely, or it, it, something's going to uh, evolve and take its place, but the way that uh, things are now, like we're not going back to anything that we, what we have been brought to believe is normal, right? Brought up to believe is normal. So yeah, there are like a certain, sure. certain topics that I, I love to keep um, tabs on 
like especially when it comes to like uh, crypto like money like cryptocurrency I'd definitely keep paying more attention to that um I think we'll be seeing a lot more um pushback from the the general population um as we get closer to to election time in the United States um when it comes to the message being put out by the mainstream media and like how the people are actually reacting and, and thinking. Uh, I think that the media is going to have to start defending people like, uh, Oh, the other death of the death of the medical system, the death of medical authority. <laughs> as soon as, as it's already coming out, like the, the, the jabby jab, you know, was not a good thing. And as, as more of this truth comes to light, it's going to piss off a lot of people. And uh, yeah, let's just say it's going to, there's there's been predictions of it getting very interesting this summer. Um, check out Cliff High's uh, Substack if you haven't uh, recently or yet or at all. Like he does about like maybe twenty minute audio clips of him like driving back and forth from errands, and he'll just sit in his car and explain explain stuff to you. <laughs> uh, Cliff Cliff uh, Cliff is like eighty years old. Uh, he died and then was uh, kicked back here uh, in this realm. For whatever reason and um he uh yeah he, he was a computer he did work with uh, he has a, a web bot or not a bot it's a it's some kind of protocol that crawls the web and then uh, from uh, using uh, the language that it collects it somehow predicts future events it's really interesting you should go check it out if you haven't yet but um i the other thing i liked what she said Todd was people that haven't built their spiritual house, spiritual house, because that is that's a good segue into our reading today, which we're not going to get to yet. The fourth segment, the anchor segment, our, our reading from Neville Goddard is called "Preparing Your Place," and it talks about you know the the mansions in heaven that God has prepared for us and all. But yeah, that's <laughs> talk about perfect segues, right? But um, we're not done with the augmentation segment yet. Um, so more more specifically, I guess, like, I don't know, like, if someone were to ask me this question, I don't know what my answer would be, but like, do you, how do you think disclosure is actually going to happen? Is it going to be institutional, like the, uh, an official statement will be made by a government agency, or is it going to be catastrophic, meaning that uh, um, it, it will be revealed outside of the, the accepted uh, parameters of authority? Um, like, do you think they're I don't know how, what, what do you think that's going to look like or or is it going to happen at all like maybe disclosure is a fairy tale and you know because they're already here I mean which is going on to my next point but like I wanted to get your opinion on on that like do you think that the Enki is going to like physically show back up and like take over stuff or like what's going to happen <laughs> well I think disclosure has already happened um I think they're going to be two levels of disclosure. But I think that disclosure has already happened because people like us know that basically the whole system is 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 BS. And a lot of people out there are starting to speak um, the truth. Uh, we already know that um, extraterrestrials are real because the governments already have reverse engineered um, the extraterrestrial technology so I think that it's already happened what it is is that I think the caveat is that disclosure has not happened on mainstream so basically there's still a lot of people that believe that if it's not on CNN on the BBC or Sky News that it is not real but basically they've told us because think about it last year they actually came out and said extraterrestrials are real and guess what no one batted the eye no one cared <laughs> disclosure has already happened like basically all people did was like ah okay next tiktok video you know so sure. this is why i say that i think it has already happened but i think the next level is that we're gonna have an alien invasion or a fake alien invasion or both but the next thing is that aliens and extraterrestrials will be involved in some form or fashion, whether it is real, fake, a mixture of both. But the long story short is 
th there will be some sort of event where it will be known that these beings can come in and out of wormholes and just appear and disappear and stuff. And that is the part where it will shock people. And I think that from reading the tea leaves, I think that this is going to be the, the last stage, the absolute last, last, because if humanity is not um, ushered into the, uh, the box that they're trying to put us in, or at least enough people, well, they'll just go for broke and they will just, like I said, either do one or the two and um, it will cause everything in the system to crash. Uh, people will then lose their minds because then they realize, hold a minute, this, this stuff is real and the conspiracy truthers have been right all along. But the thing is, is that, you know what I mean? When that happens, that's that's like end stages. Like we're, we're at the end stages of the empire now falling, but that is like the absolute last stage where now they will be out of order from, from the chaos. So I do think that one disclosure has happened, but I do think that there will be another level of disclosure when it will be, okay, well, we can't, we can't, we can't uh, get this. We can't get your humans in this box that we're trying to get. So we just burn down the whole house, burn it all down. Uh, we'll burn ourselves down as well. So instead of letting us get the throne, they will decide, they will try to destroy the entire throne from us. So that's how I see it. Oh yeah, they're certainly going to pull out all the tricks they can. Like you know, we're, we're witnessing the death throes of a very uh, ancient and uh, nefarious system here. I think, which is you know, so it's super exciting to be alive, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the to your 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 point on the alien invasion or the the maybe faked alien invasion or maybe it's both, right? But that wasn't that what uh, Warner von Braun one of the, the, the that was the last thing that he predicted would happen. Um, when uh you know before he died uh was that there were there was going to be you know this series of catastrophic events that the powers that be would use to to as a power grab right to get more control um but before aliens was supposed to be like the threat of an asteroid so like we could weaponize space or something and then the next step was the alien invasion so yeah i mean it just it seems like something along those yeah, we're, we're kind of waiting to see, you know, the, the curtain get pulled to see actually what's behind it. You know, we kind of know that the show's going on, you know, that part of the cat's out of the bag. You know, people can talk about whatever the secret or the mystery behind all these esoteric things, UFOs, all these interesting phenomenon, whatever is known about that. Um, you know, the truth really is out there. You know, well, if Roswell was real, you know, how would it be not kept a secret? Well, we all know about it. Like, it is the most open secret um you know that we've ever had and i don't know that's just it is endlessly fascinating in the way that you know the truth really is there and now we're just waiting to kind of see like you know um what is the secret you know um you know if the secret's something like you know we're on a farm you know your souls are being farmed you know you're in this you know captive horrible cage well you know maybe you know the secret doesn't come out in the way that we'd think um and when it does it does exactly what you said you know destroys um society or you know maybe uh you know, it doesn't come out until the ones that are in control allow it to come out. Uh, and it could be something like that, that, yeah, the, the gatekeepers can keep the secrets all day long. Uh, but once whatever this phenomenon is wants to show itself to everybody at once, ain't nothing you're going to do about it. So I don't know. It's we're probably in a universe uh, that's much like an ocean where there's so many different interacting uh, things together that, you know, you might get eaten by a shark, you might get taken out by a wave, or, you know, your, your own pod might be, a, you know, might abandon you. Yeah, that, there's, that reminds me of this, of this one, I uh, forget podcast I was listening to, but they were talking about how the earth is actually an, an, enti an entity that is alive itself, like the, the consciousness of mother earth and whatnot, and that it, it, it actually somehow quantumly uh, ensures that the timeline that we experience uh, does not destroy itself. So, like all these other scenarios of, you know, we being, you know, destroying ourselves with nuclear explosions or whatever, like these things actually like happened, but the Earth is somehow like navigating us, keeping us on the timeline that, you know, would sort of we don't, you know, actually experience these things. 
reminds me a little bit there of uh, Terrence McKenna saying, you know, apple trees make apples and, you know, earth makes peoples, you know, that same type of, uh, you know, direct correlation. Well, yeah, the, um, I was listening to uh, a, a ExoPolitics podcast that was talking about the Adamski uh, photos, which was super, super interesting case if you haven't looked into it. But um, God, what did you just say, Adam? I lost my track. Uh, it was Terrence McKenna. Terrence oh, McKenna, yeah. apple trees, apples, um, people, earths. So people, the earths, earths make people. Like uh, this guest was saying that uh, life is is basically a, a universal um, thing that happens. Like there are many worlds that, that are conducive to human life. And it is, this is just something that, uh, that, 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 that occurs. Like it's not anything super, super uh, rare or special. Like it's, it's like the base, you know, how the, the, the powers that be kind of want us to think that if we get enough mass and matter together and smash it into a structure, you'll get consciousness from it. Well, it's really the other way around. Like consciousness already exists. Life already is. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was kind of the guy's point, but, um, but you know, to, to speak to earth creating peoples, like planets create peoples. Right. Um, but... And the other thing is that a lot of people are going to learn that there are actually other beings and races in the universe because one of the things that I I don't like to do is I don't like to say that we have all these different races on earth. We're all one human race. We just have different color skin. And this is what I say to people. And people always laugh when they say this. So hear me out. Human beings are like dogs. So a chihuahua can get pregnant from a doberman. One dog is just bigger than the next. If they weren't the same species uh, in terms of the same race as in a dog, well, the Chihuahua could never get a child from a Doberman. Human beings are like dogs. You can get a Chinese person have, uh, having an a, a offspring from a black person, and then a black person can freaking uh, have offspring from a white person. What does that mean? We're all human beings. We're like dogs. There's nothing special. What it is, we just have different color skin. And what the, uh, the Anunnaki have done is that they've created this um, superiority complex where one color is better than the next. And where this comes from is that this comes out of uh, the Indus Valley in India and Pakistan, where the Brahmins were the ones that, um, from my research, were the first that introduced a caste system, which became a racist system. So the Brahmins were the Aryans. They were from up north. So they were more, um, basically they were Aryans, so they're white, right? And then the Dravidians were the people that existed in the Indus um, Valley first. They were more darker color skin. And some of them had woolly hair, um, a bit Afro as well. And what happened is that the Brahmins, the Aryans, pushed the Dravidians further and further down south so this is where you see south of india there are some people that have extremely dark skin some have curly hair uh, some of them have not as 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 kinky as a, to, a typical black person but there is um some kinkiness in their hair and then when you go just across the water to sri lanka that's actually even also visible in those people where they, they some of them have extremely curly hair, like a, a mixed race black person, right? So it all what my point is that we 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 think too much in color. What should we should be doing is thinking about the characteristics, the personality, and the, the attributes and what's in the heart of the other person is in front of you on the other side of the screen or you're dealing with. Because color is BS but is your attributes that is what is, is, is the main thing. And what they've done is that, because the Anunnaki actually went to the Indus Valley as well, and they were the gods. And we know that because they, they um, like Vishnu and uh, Shiva and all those other, um, the, the Brahma, they, they're all Anunnaki gods, because they even talk about um, their gods came here to earth, created them, seeded them, some had sex with them, same fallen ninja story. They had spaceships. They used to call them floating cities. 
So it's all just slightly changing different words, but yeah, it's that same thing. And what has happened is that they've tested certain types of indoctrination and technology on some people. And they first started the, the, the conceptualization of race, of racism through uh, Hinduism and in the Indus Valley. And then they just exported it to other parts of the world. And then they have us thinking in boxes. So you have, okay, well, because you're this color, I am better or worse than you. Because you're this sex, I'm better or worse than you. Well, if you have no sex, which doesn't make sense, then I'm better or worse than you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you create another system where I've got loads of money, you've got none. So all it is is just causing division, which is the, the idea. And the idea and the tactics that they use is to create even more boxes so then one is a homosexual one is not so that's another box right so what it is is to divide and divide and divide and divide and divide to the point of insanity where human beings don't even know who they are what they are where they've come from uh, and and what is their true worth in the, the 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 actual grand scheme of the cosmos so can you imagine then when do you realize that they're actually other beings that look similar to us or maybe slightly different, it's, it's going to shatter people. And then we can be worrying about, oh, well, this person is black or this person is white or whatever. And hold on a minute. We've got ETs coming here trying to tell us what to do. And then we should start to realize, actually, you know what? We're all earthlings. So maybe we should stop thinking ourselves as in one subgroup of people or just think of us as earthlings because it's really us against them, to be honest with you. That's kind of how they portray it in the uh, the Earth Final Conflict series. Is is that the the aliens they offer these technologies, but in the background they're like collecting people's information and conducting genetic experience on them, and and sending them off planet to fight in wars where they just get slaughtered. Right? It's it's like a, yeah, and it's Man, really I'm well just written. Of all the shows that hold this line, Bill, because I'm thinking of like V is for Visitors or like the old uh, a Twilight Zone uh, to serve man. You know, where they're uh, uh, taking people to this perfect paradise and they've got a book to serve man, but it's actually a cookbook. That 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 movie series, V for Visitors, I thought it was V for Vendetta, but I, I might be wrong. Yeah, and there's an original and then the remake. The remake, okay. they cut short. The original is, you know, lizard people stealing. Yes, a yes, yes. That, that movie, right, is levels. That is literally a display of the Anunnaki and because the thing is for people to understand the Anunnaki is a term that uh, came out of from the, the Akkadians and it just means those from heaven to earth came now the Anunnaki are more uh, symbolized by the ruling class in the extraterrestrials so in the Anunnaki would be equivalent to like the heads of state, the kings the queens, the monarchies, central bankers, prime ministers, presidents, all these people that are the movers and shakers on earth, they will be equivalent of the Anunnaki now. And then the people like us, the builders, the truck drivers, the people that clean the pools, engineers, etc., we will be equivalent to the Agigi. And the Agigi are the ones that went, tried to go to war with the Anunnaki, and it's because of their rebellion that the Anunnaki created us. So what it is now is that for some people to understand, when we're talking about the Anunnaki, we're talking about the ruling class of the extraterrestrials. Those are the ones that are the movers and shakers. And in fact, all the people that I listed, the central bankers, the monarchies, heads of state, they are all descendants of the Anunnaki because they had sex with the daughters of man and they created a particular bloodline and this is how they rule now. They rule through their bloodlines. So what it is now is that uh, even in the Anunnaki as well, there are different races in the Anunnaki. So some of the Anunnaki are from Orion. Some people, some of them are from the Pallades. Some are from um, uh, Zeti Reticuli. Zeti Reticuli. So, so there, there are many different even those, those would be different races. <laughs> right? This is the proper term of the word race because you're from a different planet, right? So there would be different races of extraterrestrials 
that all of those that are like the the powerful ones that make up the Anunnaki. So it's like this um, extraterrestrial council of ETs that are ruling the Earth, and they go to war with each other, fighting for dominance on Earth. And they all had their own bloodlines, which became religions and uh, which, are, which are cults. And they will fight against each other for on behalf of their quotation marks God. So what it is now is that some ETs are reptilians, some are draconians. So what it is now is that some are blue avians. Hollywood tends to focus <coughs> on the Dracos and the reptilians. So I just wanted to preface the people that not all of the extraterrestrials are Dracos and reptilians. And they, they, they just focus on one part because it's easy to sort of like make them into a boogeyman that to install more fear. So some may actually look reptilian. And there's a very, I think it's in uh, Iraq, there was a, 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 F, um, a, a clear effigy of this. Um, basically, it looks like a reptilian lady with a, with a baby in her hand. And there's another one where she's nursing the baby. So it shows then that they have, they walk on their hind legs, they have two arms, two legs, and some may just have reptilian heads, right? And those are the ones that the Hollywood spots the light on because it's easy to make a sphere. And in fact, some of them are actually good, but they're also some that are very bad. So we can't really even cast a broad brush with all of them and saying that all reptilians are bad and all Dracos are bad. And even... The reason why they call Dracos is because it's uh, a star system called Draco, right? The Draco star system. So that's why they call Draconians. So basically, that movie, V for Visitor, shows you exactly that the that part of the Anunnaki are the ones that came here trying to use guile and, and trickery to enslave us because the end goal in that movie was they wanted to enslave humanity. And what they did, they got humans to do the work for them. We are the 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 the, the policemen. We are the uh, the the prison officers, right? Keeping our own people enslaved, trying selling our souls for a pound of flesh or a few shackles, you know. And then we are actually doing the dirty work for them. So uh, I just wanted to to preface and say to people that not all Dracos and all reptilians are bad, but yes, they are bad. Some of them. Have you ever uh, seen the movie They Live? Um, when I was really young, but I can't really remember it. But it's, I know, obviously, it's one they, of those they... movies that fits right into this. Uh, you know, either a predictive programming type thing, you know, truth coming out, or just like an archetypal creative force, like just narrowing in on the truth. A truth, right? It's a science fiction movie. Uh, but the story of They Live, it's about a construction worker, Rodney Piper who comes across this secret underground group of people who turns out they're fighting an alien presence and they create these glasses. And when you put them on, not only can you see the aliens in their true form, but you see what they've done with our media. So you'll look at a sign, it'll be an advertising, but it'll say something like, obey, get married. You know, you look at money, it's like God is money. All these like subliminal things that are pushed through. Um, and it's one of those, you know, just great kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, reflections on the archons in our world yeah it's a brilliant movie no it's it's a brilliant movie and one of the greatest fight scenes of all time rodney piper and uh keith david kick the crap out Dude. of each other in real life in the movie for real i got that got really uh super realistic in that scene i remember i watched it recently that's why i'm commenting like i am but i just didn't realize how violent they were with each other like, holy crap they were really going at it no, they, they, he's like, no, actually hit me. Yeah. 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 Um, so back to, um, uh, Todd, you had mentioned cast, like the cast system that, that is the hallmark of, I would say the, any, or any type of organization, like compartmentalization, right? Like that is a hallmark of, of like what, what Cliff High would say is the Elohim worship cult, right? which is synonymous with Anunnaki, like these these uh, Kachinas, like from the Hopi uh, uh, culture, like these are all speaking of the same beings, right? Um, just a little wordplay that, that I kind of stumbled across after reading 
uh, Mauro Biglino's The Naked Bible. This guy did translations for the Vatican um, and then parted ways because figured out the Old Testament's actually talking about aliens, right? But uh, anyway, the Elohim is a plural term for, for gods, right? But then, and then now we have what are, who runs our world? We have the Elites, the little Ls, L, the elites, the Elites, right? So it's a little wordplay there. Um, just to wrap up on... No, this... I never noticed that wordplay. And there was another yeah, one that that's a good one. earlier was augment. And I never thought about an auger, you know, in the taking away. I was like, oh, yeah, words mean things. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then just to... To, oh, the, I guess the the opposite of, of a caste system or divide and conquer would be something more of like a meritocracy, right? Something that is based off of uh, cooperation and like the only arguments we're going to have is like who 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 is better at, uh, you know, building houses or, or whatever it is, right? Like who who who's the best able to do this job? And well, that guy's going to be the leader then, right? Like there's no, you know, party line and division stuff like that, like decentralization i think is, is 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 what they're afraid of and that's why like they hate bitcoin <laughs> absolutely hate bitcoin because it's so decentralized but i'm rambling here i'm getting off topic uh, sticking to aliens and disclosure i did um come across a story listening to exopolitics today about the uk parliament actually has an official like roadmap for disclosure and i don't have the link with me uh, right now, maybe I'll find it later, but uh, it, it's essentially three parts. Their plan is, and I'll I'll explain it here in a second. So they're going to roll out disclosure in three steps. The first step being that the announcing to the public that they have discovered like life signatures on another planet, right? So they'll be like, oh yeah, there is you know biological life out there. Like maybe it's microorganisms or or whatever. And then step two will be that they have detected techno signatures on a planet, which means that there is a race of beings that have uh, harnessed the ability to uh, control and manipulate matter. And, and, you know, much like we have to more or less some extent. And then get this, their third and final step for disclosure is to say that, oh, uh, not only are these other two things too, true, but uh, they're, they're here already. Like they're walking around us. They're in the population. Like that just seems like a pretty, pretty drastic step from, oh yeah, we have a little microorganism to like, oh no, they're here. Like <laughs> your neighbor could be one. No big deal. <laughs> well, uh, imagine this, you know, let's say that, you know, it's known that at some point this is going to come forward, you know, whatever these other creatures or things may be like, there's going to be a point in which it's going to be shown. Uh, you know, say there's a uh, upcoming cataclysm, you know, it's going to wipe out the planet for whatever reason, through observation, trying to save, being involved in it, you know, something like that, you'd expect them to show up. If you know that timeline has happened in history and you know it's happening again, you know, you would try to, you know, uh, run your empire, you know, uh, knowing it's going to collapse and, you know, run it into the ground beforehand uh, and, uh, you know, knowing that eventually once it happens, you're going to put in place things like that so that, uh, you know, as soon as the reality comes into place, we've all been told the story. We've all seen the sci fi shows we've all seen and uh, entertainment becomes reality. You live a movie, you know, you dream the horror movie. It is, you know, in your subconscious. Um, and I've also thought about the flip side of reality that, you know, if there is this co-creation uh, with the universe, or you can direct the future through your thought thoughts, then doing things like that to a group that says, you know what, we want to advance ourselves in these technological ways. Therefore, we, you know, uh, predictive programming, put out the media, which then may lead to, you know, uh, the invasion of Earth and all of those things coming forward just through, uh, you know, uh, making our beliefs our reality. Yeah, manifestation. That is that's I interesting mean, that you talk. Work, we all do it the same. <laughs> you know, that's really interesting. You you spoke about the um the UK government because <laughs> the UK government is is. But the thing is, I can make a prediction here. People are still not going to believe it. People are still not going to believe it because in the UK, the propaganda is 
I used to live there. The propaganda is extremely heavy. Like, dude, people still believe that what they see in the BBC is real and it's truth. And it is just like so obvious that it's propaganda. But what I would say is that I think that they are going to tell us all the truth. And most people are just going to believe ah, they're just, they're just BSing. So they can just leave it and just like, but then what will happen is that they will, they will allow, it will allow them to absorb their karmic debt that they're trying to do for enslaving humanity. Because they told us extraterrestrials are real. They, they told us that last year. You had a guy, um, Paul Hellier. He was, uh, 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 the, I think he was, um, the, he was for defense, the Secretary of Defense for Canada. He went to the United States Senate and told them extraterrestrials are real. They would want to work with us, but because we have nukes and we're too warring, they don't want to work with us. If we were to put down the war, then we'd be able to get help from them. But again, no one believed him. And this was a guy in the Senate. This is not like, and this is the 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 um defense secretary for Canada. This is not like um some random person off the street, you know? So again, they tell us everything, but the thing is that we no no one believes because we are TikTok generation now. So we have the attention span of a goldfish. And if the headline uh, isn't punchy enough, we just ignore it, you know? So simple like that. No, and, and that explanation makes a lot of sense to me too, because, you know, if you look throughout history, we've had a... Uh, you know, a presence of something that appears like UFOs, you know, these tic tac like shapes throughout history um, and reports of beings coming from the sky. And one of the most fascinating things about, you know, the nuke connection is once we started detonating nukes, you know, these things and other things start showing up. And then we have this plethora of other described uh, craft. So, you know, we may have been a, a, you know, a planet that until recently was being interacted by a group of species. And there's something in nuclear energy, scalar energy, something that when you detonate a bomb, like you're sending out a signal across space time that can be detected. And all of a sudden we're lightning lighting up on other people's radar. And it could absolutely be something like that, that, you know, the, you know, that the timeline of humanity may be getting even more complicated um, through our inadvertent reach out. And through that reach out, I mean, if you start looking into, you know, what the national labs are doing with plasma physics and nuclear physics and how they've diverted the uh, the mainstream physics to not be looking at, um, you know, like we talked on the last episode, you know, Brown's theory and all these different uh, things for anti-gravity and, you know, limitless energy. Um, I don't know. It, it just, it becomes this, uh, uh, I don't know. It's It's interesting how we may be on the precipice of having all of these like amazing things. And when you look at Diana Polska has talked about, uh, uh, her interactions and long time spendings with this uh, this guy who is on like uh, I don't know what you call it the launch crew. He's he's been with NASA since he was like sixteen or seventeen, and been there one of the core members. He's on all the mission launches. Um, he's always there, and he's he's taken around and talked to her about you know NASA's involvement with ufology, UFOs, uh, these things that they've had to you know like uh, wipe out of images and such. And he and others say these are donations. Like when there's a crash retrieval of this time, it's a donation. And it could be that kind of, you know, you meet a monkey in the forest and, you know, you want to you want to kind of help them out. You want to, you know, advance them and help them. Well, maybe teach them how to use a spear. You know, you give them the technology and the knowledge and you help them in that way. Uh, why? Well, they're also dangerous. You don't want to be a Roman, alone in a room with a monkey because, you know, if they get mad at you, they're going to rip your rip you limb for limb and rip your face off. So, you know, it's kind of like, oh, you've got nukes over there. Okay, well, let, let's see what you can do with this tech. Hey, we can neutralize those, but you're pretty smart. Let's see uh, let's see what happens when you go in this direction with your technology. So I'm segueing there, but, you know, just this idea of, you know, like, it's not all good. It's not all bad. We could be leaving, living in a, a vastly more complicated ecosystem than we could ever understand. This is true. This is true. It is the problem that we have is that everything is for profit. And if, because th this is the real kicker, we 
discovered free energy over 100 years ago through Nikola Tesla. He created a device that tapped into the Earth's ionosphere and was able to power um, devices uh, with electricity just through the ether. So you would have appliances that wouldn't even need to be plugged in. The energy frequency would just be constantly topping up the um the, the topping up the charge or would they even need batteries because it's all constantly connected you know so you wouldn't have a cable less um future but the problem is is that there was no way to monetize it because it was free and because energy is for a cost this is why they pushed um petroleum because it is a, a physical thing that you can make money off and the problem that we have is that because energy is controlled, we have a debt-based system in terms of having to create money to buy that energy, which then goes into the system and creates more debt. So what that debt does now is that it comes down to the normal person on the street, and then they're so um, busy trying to pay off this debt or to make this debt note, which is really what we call money today, that they have no time to even look into these things, read books, no time to even do anything on themselves spiritually. So all it is now is that all of these things that we're talking about, for most people, their their situation is too grave for them to even have to spare the time, to be able to spare the time to 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 investigate and to to break the mental slavery. So we we have a bit of a, a dichotomy here where um we have all this technology, all this information, all this spiritual advancement happening to us all at the same time. But then we're still trapped in the old paradigm of being stuck uh, on the Ferris wheel, like the squirrel, running and running and running and running and running, never get anywhere. And the problem is that when the system does break, it's going to be extremely hard to handle because then, like you said, Adam, then the extraterrestrials, then all the technology that they were given to humans, you know, people are going to realize, well, hold on a minute, well, this is what it was really is. They're going to feel very cheated. And it's all by design because even nuclear uh, technology is not the, the ultimate because it is not free energy. Free energy um, was discovered a long time ago. And then you have like the anti-gravity technology that um, Hitler and the Nazis uh, worked on with the, the bell. If anyone goes to look at the Nazi bell, that was anti-gravity technology. So they say that he was communicating with um, through seances or whatever to be in some different realm, or it was just actual extraterrestrials. But what we do know is that uh, extraterrestrials fought on both sides of the war. We know that through Admiral Byrd, through his diary. They call them fugal rods. So extraterrestrials have always been here. It's just that at some times they were more in the open. Uh, other times, like now, they're more hidden. And they do their ruling through their bloodlines, which are the people that I spoke about before. And this is why we have a closed loop system that is extremely hard to break away from which is why most people are simply just living in the matrix and are just consuming the blue pills every single day, you know? So it's, it's tough um, it, for, for humanity. It's, it's truly a prison because that technology gives us the ability to go outward in any and all directions to any point. And, you know, the debt-based system is to a detriment to our own planet because I often think about this. Like if we could fix one thing in humanity, it would be truth. Because if you couldn't lie or you, you know, you had the ultimate truth, you'd be looking at like, well, we have the technology to make plastics that are biodegradable and safe for the environment and aren't going to stick around, but it costs a lot of money. Well, where's our value? You know, if the, the value of the planet is the value of the planet, then instantaneously that becomes like the, 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 the that monetary amount isn't viewed in the same way. And we're kind of stuck in this world of, you know, we have the ability to, you know, and uh, make this place truly, truly a paradise if we just reframed uh, our values. And I think a lot of that's in just lies. 
you know, the big lie about plastic and recycling, everybody's, you know, finally figuring out, you know, that hundred monkey type uh, thing that we've been talking about where, you know, uh, the mainstream media is peddling it. And as long as most people are believing it, you know, society's going to push in that direction. And yeah, I don't know if we could, if we could find a way for humanity to, um, to be able to do that. You know, I mean, ultimately my only hope from like a dystopian society of like AI and technology and knowledge is that if knowledge could truly be democratized, then we could truly be making, you know, the right decisions. Problem is they want to put the decision making, you know, in the hands of uh, those databases. Yeah, that's the that's just another thing to look out for in the next few months, really, or years, I guess, is the, the death of the monetary system. Like I know I mentioned crypto before, but uh, I think Utah, the uh, Utah Secretary State person, uh, went ahead and said that uh, Utah can use uh, physical like gold and silver and these these types of assets to to start backing up something with with the, that has to do with that state specifically um zimbabwe just uh, introduced their own currency which is backed by gold like say goodbye to the dollar it's game over like they've already introduced the gold standard again like it's this is uh yeah this in, interesting times to be alive for sure um death of authority religion media medical systems all that stuff um, yeah. but what like todd said it's the end of an empire you know it's it takes a long time for that to happen um what's what's nice about the ending is that there are beginnings but i've heard it described in the way that if you look at like a a caterpillar turning into a butterfly that when it's in the middle of changing if you were to open up you know the carapace and look inside it's just goop you can't see anything it's a complete mess um but it's going to turn into a butterfly and I kind of think that's where we're at. We've kind of, you know, we've we've hit that decline. We're we're in the forest. We can't really see it through the trees. And um, eventually, we're gonna see a butterfly. But right now, we're kind of, you know, we're seeing that goop, the black goo. Ooh, the black. Definitely, goo. definitely, definitely. It is. We're in. It's interesting times we're living, and this is why I do my best to teach, inform, and educate others. Or what's to come. I always say I don't profess to know everything, but what I do know for sure is that the system is a fraud and we've been lied to. That is an absolute certainty, you know? So the rest is up to us to learn and understand and, you know, make changes in our life. And I think that the changes uh, have to come from us and come from within. This is why I help uh, people um, get in shape because I understand that in order to make changes in your life you need to actually work on yourself but a lot of people think that by working on yourself it just means making more money well no you need to look at yourself as a mind body spirit complex and this is why I help spiritually incline people burn fat and build muscle because I understand that getting in shape isn't solely about making the body stronger it's about making the mind stronger. It's about changing your beliefs about yourself, having a new belief system. It's about creating new habits. It's about cutting out uh, all the things that are not good for you, whether it may be people, places, food, um, things that you say to yourself about yourself, you know? <clears throat> so it's a multifaceted of things. This is why like, when I coach people, I don't just say, hey, eat less and go and exercise I help them create habits and do things like meditation read books you know have like a, a, a bedtime ritual where for example some people may use that to sit down and just be by themselves you know do things that do have like fun activities you know I am a big proponent of that because what that does now is that it gets you to break out of your normal cycle and it allows you to create new patterns new habits and you create new neural pathways in the brain and you're able to, you know, bring in more energy into you because we are energetic beings. We have an, an, an we have an energetic body, a light body. So doing things that like exercise and eating 
healthy and clean and high energy foods bring in more light into the body, which means that you start vibrating at a higher level. So this is why people that tend to uh, like make changes in their life on the physical side end up making other changes in their life because they have improved relationships with their spouses, their family, their friends. They get um, do better at work, so they may get a promotion or they may get a new job. They may have the courage to take that risk and create that business, approach that girl, approach that guy, you know what I mean? Get married, whatever. But when you start with yourself and you go through the body, the body is like the gateway to your higher self because it's through the body, which is why uh, scripture says that the body is the temple of God. So if you want God to reside in you, you treat that body right. You keep it clean and strong because the body gets weak if the body doesn't move. So, you know, this is why you always tell people. And like I said, if information like this resonates with people. And uh, also, I actually teamed up with, uh, I work with a company now that um, produces mushrooms. So I'm a big proponent of psychedelics. Because I think psychedelics, if everyone on earth were to use and have used psychedelics, the planet would be an absolutely different place because you can't um, take things like ayahuasca and be the same as that person you were the day before because you've seen too much about yourself that, well, I mean, you can be, but it would just be denial. And that hurts worse when you deny yourself of what, when you see what you really are, so... If even getting stuff like some mushrooms interests people, hit me up at Adriano underscore two four six or Todd Cable on Instagram on Facebook, and let's see if we can help you whether uh, improve your spirituality through some psychedelics, some mushrooms, or get in a shape or both. You know what I mean? And uh, if I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction. You know. And speaking on the idea of transformation in general, as a perfect segue into our anchor segment. But before we get into that, everybody, uh, when you are starting to prepare yourself to go uh, make these changes, these transformations, um, it it really, I'm speaking from experience here, with Todd specifically, it, it helps to have a coach, right? And and if only for um, like what I did, six months, like during those, that, that time frame, you're going to learn so much about nutrition, how to move, the correct way to move. Uh, maybe the correct way to think, which is kind of what uh, the anchor segment is all about. But um, ev even if it is only for a short period of time, I would recommend that you reach out to a coach of some sort, somebody like Todd. I, I recommend Todd specifically. So <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, uh, very, very uh, good experience I had, and I would definitely recommend it uh, for it, for anybody else too. Um but speaking of transformation and intent, those are the motifs of the the last uh, segment of the show, which is called anchoring, the, the anchor segment. Well, we're still dealing in matters of spirit, dimensions, uh, timelines, consciousness, and, and metaphysics, right? We're going to uh, kind of look at, uh, explore some methods about how to best navigate ourselves into manifesting um, what we would desire, right? So... Um, we have been going through a book entitled uh, The Power of Awareness, go figure, um, by Neville Goddard. It was published in 1952, and we are on the chapter uh, chapter 9 entitled Preparing Your Place. It is a super short reading, uh, much uh, like the rest of these chapters have been in his book. Um, it's not even a page, and most of it are quotes, so there's lots of spaces. I'm going to sit down to read this because... Um, I bought the big book, which is all 10 of his writings, and it's just kind of a pain to try to hold it and read at the same time. So without further ado, um, he, he starts off with two Bible verses, which I will read, and then we'll get into the, the uh, chapter, and then I'll kind of rehash just a few parts that stuck out to me. So preparing your place. And all mine are thine and thine are mine. John 17, verse 10. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. 
That's Revelation 14, chapter or chapter 14, verse 15. The start of the chapter. All is yours. Do not go seeking for that. Do not go seeking for that which you are. Appropriate it. Claim it. Assume it. Everything depends upon your concept of yourself. That which you do not claim as true of yourself cannot be realized by you. The promise is, this is another Bible quote, whosoever, whosoever hath, to him shall it be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that which he seemeth to have. This can actually be found in two books, uh, Matthew and Luke. Continuing with the chapter. Hold fast in your imagination to all that is lovely and of good report. For the lovely and the good are essential in your life if it is to be worthwhile. Assume it. You do this by imagining that you already are what you want to be and already have what you want to have. Quote, a man, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs, Proverbs 23, 7. Continuing with the chapter. Be still and know that you are that which you desire to be, and you will never have to search for it. In spite of your appearance of freedom of action, you obey, as everything else does, the law of assumption. Whatever you may think of the question of free will, the truth is your experiences throughout your life are determined by your assumptions, whether conscious or unconscious. An assumption builds a bridge of incidents that lead inevitably inevitably to the fulfillment of itself. Man believes the future to be the natural development of the past. But the law of assumption clearly shows that this is not the case. Your assumption places you psychologically where you are, not physically. Then your senses pull you back from where you were psychologically to where you are physically. It is these psychological forward motions that produce your physical forward motions in time. Free cognition permeates all the scriptures of the world. Here's a, another Bible quote. In my, father's in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. And now I have told you before it came to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. That's from the book of John, the Gospel of John. And to end the chapter, the quote I in this quotation from John is your imagination which goes into the future, into one of the many mansions. Mansion is the state desired, telling of an event before it occurs physically is simply feeling yourself into the desired state until it has the tone of reality. You go and prepare a place for yourself by imagining yourself into the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Then, you speed from this state of the wish fulfilled, where you have not been physically, back to where you were physically a moment ago. Then, with an irresistible forward movement, you move forward across a series of events to the physical realization of your wish. That where you have been in imagination, there you will be in the flesh also. Quote, Unto the place from whence the rivers come, hither they return again. End quote. That's from Ecclesiastes. So that is the that's the entirety of the reading. Um, just a few things that popped out to me, and then uh, we'll wrap up here. 
um the two the two bible verses about uh the one about uh to him it shall be to whosoever hath to him it shall be given that one that always always confused me uh growing up in the catholic uh, parochial school system like i did didn't make any sense um really because why would uh, the person that has nothing everything's taken away from them if they don't have anything that doesn't really make sense does it um so this Neville does a good job of explaining uh, that verse um, more in depth in a particular in a, in a preceding chapter, but I appreciate his input here too. Um, and then the other one from the other verse about the mansions from the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus is talking about all these like mansions in the sky. And growing up, I was like, that didn't make any sense to me, right? But uh, yeah, Neville Neville has a way of taking uh, lofty ideas down and making it available uh, in a new light to to people like me so i appreciate uh, neville for that which is why we are featuring here him here on the anchor segment um a few other things that popped out oh uh he says to hold fast in your imagination to all that is lovely and of good report uh, this is also uh, something that he previously brought up uh, two chapters ago when uh, last time Ben Walsmith was with us, and we were th we were talking about um, not making assumptions, which is one of the four agreements agreements that Don Miguel Ruiz talks about, and uh, the power of assumption, the law of assumption, according to Neville Goddard, and how these two kind of uh, how you can reconcile these two. Well, I think the answer here is to uh, only assume what is lovely and of good report, right? Only think about these things, which kind of goes along the lines of a philosophical axiom um, by the name of Hanlon's razor, which is do not attribute anything to malice, uh, that which can be attributed to stupidity. So it's uh, another um, mind trick I find myself using a lot. Hanlon's razor. Um, the, the proverb verse that he gave, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, going back to that heart brain, right? 40,000 neurons in the heart. It's got its own nervous system. And actually, the heart forms in the utero before the brain. So when we're all in mama's tummy, our heart forms, for, forms first and then our brain. I thought that was, that was interesting. Uh, Neville didn't say that. I'm just adding this. <laughs> and then, of course, I would be uh, remiss to not mention the aspect of time travel in in this uh, in this chapter. He says uh, your assumption places you uh, psychologically where you are not physically, right? So you're you're traveling into the future to prepare this place for yourself, and then you are pulled toward that place through the uh, subsequent events that occur after you have prepared it, right? You don't have to worry about how you're going to get from point A to point B. You just have to know where you're going, right? And this is something that Vader Zealand talks a lot about in Reality Transurfing. So tie that in to that book. And that's, that is the, yeah, that's all the notes I had for this chapter. Um, guys, did you have anything that, popped out to you that you wanted to add before we sign off. Otherwise, I'll go through that spiel. No, nothing to add. All right. We will continue with our exploration of Neville Goddard in the future. Um, in the meantime, though, be sure to go over to the sponsor's website, mysticalwares.com. Sign up for the free Scalar Energy session on Fridays. Uh, I do not know what the upcoming one is, so, um, but uh, get your name in the bucket is absolutely free. You do have to go through the checkout process, but there's nothing in the cart. Um, it's zero dollars. It's just a way to get your name on the list, basically. So head on over there and do that for sure. It's a free, uh, free service, um, and just try it out. You know, if 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 you feel anything weird or good, you know, write write me an email. I'd like to know because. I've kind of had some odd experiences during the sessions myself. So uh, I'm curious if you guys 
have any experiences like I did. And then uh, on, on top of scalar energy, uh, get yourself some Shungite. Um, Derek has got the largest, I believe, stockpile of Shungite in in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, the the um, the so the second largest in the world, I, I would say, uh, the largest being in Karelia, Russia, where uh, the Shungite it, you know comes from. Like it's it's a space rock. It, it, you could say this is really alien technology. This is ET technology. It, it crashed into the Earth thousands and thousands of years ago. It's got special properties that uh, that help. Uh, pretty much acts like a sponge for EMF. But anyway, there's tons of information over at mysticalwares.com. Definitely go check that out for uh, Shungite and Scalar Energy sessions. And in the meantime, uh, I would really appreciate it if you could share the show with anybody that you find or that you think might find these topics interesting. Um, please, please rate the show on whatever platform you are using. We are on most most of them maybe all of them and then uh, lastly help spread the love whatever way that you can whatever is best and easiest for you and until next time chrononauts vibrate high and carpe diem